I Elopa, uh, sorry, I had a last moment appointment. I'm driving right now. I will try to hear as much as possible. Sure. But yeah, this was last moment. So I'm really sorry about that. Okay, that's Swati, right? Yeah, Swati. Okay, okay, no problem. Thank um, you so much, yeah. No worries. We have Sonal, we have Dipali. Um, I don't know whose number is this. The last digit is May I request everyone to uh, switch on your camera if you can and so that we can see each other's face just to say hi before we start. Hi, Lakshmi. Hi, this is Vaishali. Hi. Oh, that's hi. Vaishali, is it? Because it says Lakshmi, so I thought it's no, Lakshmi. It's me, actually. I also joined Lakshmi. I also oh, joined. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm joined with my phone number ending with 8100. Yeah, who is this? Vaishali. Oh, Vaishali. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hi, Vipali. <laughs> hi, hi. I just saw Richa joined in and I can't see her anymore. Uh, okay, Richa is there. Hello. Hi, hi, Sonal. Uh, hi, Neha. Hi, Lopa. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Isn't it very mor good. morning for you, right? You're in India right now. Yeah, it's 7.30, but uh, yeah. I anyways get up for the workout, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining in. Hi, Jayanti. I'm sure it's early morning for you as well. I think she is... She's not on mute, though. Okay. All right. So, firstly, thank you so much. We have uh, a lot of people who are right now. Uh, we have one, two. Yeah, we have two people who have joined us from India. Rest, everyone, I guess, are from US. And I think we have someone. We have Richa from Amsterdam right now. So we are all in a different time zone. So firstly, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, every time I do webinar, it's, um, I mean, I have done webinars for so many times, but trust me, every time I talk, I kind of get a little nervous because, um, I mean, it, it's just that, you know, uh, uh, facing the camera and talking live versus doing recording and talking are two different things. But uh, yeah, but it's absolutely fine with me because, you know, most of you, you know me already and a few of you are already my clients. So, yeah. All right. So I think I'll not be, uh, you know, waiting too much. We already have 12 people join in and I am going to start sharing my screen and I will be asking you guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Can you guys see my screen now? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's there. Yeah, the Bali stay there because I'm seeing your reaction <laughs> to be there. Okay. So before we start, as we all know that today I'm going to talk about uh, hormonal balance and how we can eat, what are the type of macros that we should be eating based on our individual goal and why eating as per our macronutrient is extremely important for our hormone health. Now, this is the, uh, you know, an overall overview of what I will be talking today. I will also be explaining you the three main hormones that dictate females female body and how are these dictated and what are the conditions in which we can uh, uh, you know take a control of it 
And uh, at the same time, how can we do meal planning and what are the different tools and strategies uh, that we can incorporate to uh, basically make a um, uh, you know, um, an improved or a structured um, goal towards our um, whatever, I mean, a structured method towards our whatever health goal that we are working for. Okay, so now before I start, uh, can I just request uh, whoever is there to, uh, you know, send me uh, in message uh, in terms of what is that health goal that you want to achieve and is there any hormonal imbalance that you are dealing with so that you know we have I have something uh, which I can see before I start and if we have time I can probably answer to that uh, you know your individual question so I'm going to give you uh, exactly three minutes of time and you can probably type in your question or you can type in what do you what are you suffering from and then probably you know we can take it up from there We have Dipali who says, little higher testosterone, manage PCOS symptoms, create sonal. Yes, I am going to ca cover that today. Two more minutes. PCOS and how to regulate periods. Sure. May I know who is this uh, Samsung S90 PCOS and how to regulate periods? I actually don't have your name. Uh, Jenti manage weight gain. Yes, yes, I know. Probably Jenti in your case, it could be perimenopause. Uh, insulin resistance and weight gain. Uh, this is Anusha from Seattle. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Anusha, I got your message. So you want to know about PCOS and how to regulate. So today I am going to talk a bit about PCOS, not entirely, but of course, since the topic is more on hormone health, uh, I will be talking more about, uh, you know, how to manage a balanced hormone and uh, what should be our approach towards it. Manage weight gain and irregular periods. Perfect. So I think we are all bang on. And um, and this is exactly what it is going to be in today's session. And uh, I'm excited and I really hope I answer each one of you. However, uh, while I am talking, if any of you want to ask something, uh, you can raise your hands and we can stop for a while and I can answer you. Or we can wait till the end and you can collate your questions and I can answer it at the end. Um, I plan to finish this session within uh, 60 minutes. Um, after the session gets over, we will be personally emailing each one of you the recipe ebook that we have spoken about. And also, I will be sharing some tools through which you can calculate your own macros uh, based on your goals. So stay with me. Uh, till the end and as we keep progressing you can keep writing down your questions and I'm going to answer to that as we uh, move forward. So before we start uh, I'm going to start with my introduction. A lot of you know me but still for people who are new. So yes I am a nutritionist and I am public health certified. I am a weight loss and hormone coach and I've been a health coach from last 13 years now. I am a certified yoga TTC teacher, 200 hours. I am also a certified ACE personal trainer. I am also a Reiki master, level three, but I don't do it on others. I just do it on myself. Uh, and you must, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you know how much I love going to the gym and lifting weights and hiking too. And I have always been a long distance walking enthusiast. And I think my biggest achievement has been uh, walking 50 kilometers in one day in Singapore two years back, where I walked from the uh, western rim of Singapore to the eastern uh, rim of Singapore um, in one day and in about eight hours. 
Uh, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I am a solo entrepreneur, uh, which probably uh, started, um, I mean, World of Wow started in 2016, but before that I was uh, a freelancer. So yes, I am, I've been a freelancer and an entrepreneur, more or less, uh, from the last 13 years now. And yes, I am spiritual. I believe in spirituality, but I am not religious. So I don't go to temples and uh, fastings and puja part and all that, but I believe in spirituality. So this is a little bit about me, who I am as a person. And trust me, everything, whoever knows me, they know what I'm talking about. So this goes my um, hormone health story. So I have been suffering uh, from endometriosis since puberty, but I was really not aware of that because back then there were no scans uh, till I was pregnant when it got diagnosed that I have endometriosis. After that, I underwent three rounds of surgeries to um, scrape off the, uh, you know, uh, the excess tissue, which usually grows because of endometriosis. And then I was put on progesterone shots for almost four years, which had its own havoc uh, effect on me. More uh, more so is, was on my uh, weight. I had put on, uh, I think, uh, excess 10 kgs over a period of two months. So it was like so bad. Um, th that happened because of progesterone shots. And of course, a lot of other things started while I was there. At exactly that time, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto, which is autoimmune uh, thyroid disorder, and rheumatoid arthritis, which is also an autoimmune disorder. I also have a worn out left cartilage uh, in the knee because of my wrong running posture, um, which was an absolute my mistake. And I really did not bother much to get it corrected till till now when I really don't have any other choice and I can't really run much. Uh, yes, I uh, used to suffer from immense amount of inflammation and bloating and migraine uh, and acidity in digestion. And I really had no control over it till about, uh, I guess, four years back when I started, uh, you know, uh, practicing a lot of uh, other uh, form of uh, approaches, which helped me. Uh, yes, I have suffered from stress disorder and anxiety uh, with high cortisol levels, with a lot of fat accumulation in my abdominal belly, in spite of the fact that I used to work out every single day. I have been eating more or less not unhealthy um, you know, I would say I was a good average healthy eater. Uh, but yes, it uh, I was suffering from a lot of stress and it continued. I'll be very honest with you. Stress is something which just doesn't go overnight. It continues and uh, it, of course, has reduced a lot uh, than what it was in the past. And uh, now it is more of um, managing it. So whenever such situations come, when I'm too stressed, too anxious, I kind of know how to manage it. And I'm going to talk about it, um, why I'm talking about all these things. Um, so yeah, and another reason why I was mostly stressed was, you know, when you run your own business, when you have a team, when you have employees who, you know, who you have to um, pay, it's, it's kind of uh, overwhelming and not Somebody like me, I don't come from any business background. So I am more of a person who is um, a giver than, uh, you know, having a business mindset. So today also, I'm not a great businesswoman, I would say. Uh, the only reason why I'm sticking to this and why I do what I do is because I love doing this. I am extremely passionate uh, to really help people, to really pull them from where they are at this moment. And probably that is the reason I have today clients who have been with me from the last seven, eight years. I mean, I still have some examples right now in this meeting where I have people, clients who have been my clients like multiple amount of times and who have been with me uh, for a very, very long time. So I'm really thankful uh, to each one of them. I really, I'm really thankful to each one of you who really trust me and have given me the opportunity. Uh, so this is me over the years. On the left, it's 2016. I was in Bangalore and you can look at me. I was pretty chunky and had a lot of body weight. And this is exactly the time when uh, I was running WOW and WOW was at its peak. But then I was also undergoing a lot of um, 
work stress and my health was not really doing well and nothing was aligned to be very honest you know um i would come home uh, so i had taken up office space i would come home around 7ish in the evening and I, as soon as i would be back there was no planning that i ever used to do though i i was already in the health segment though i was already uh you know coaching and training people they hey you need to do all these things but i was personally not following it so it used to be like double overwhelming for me thinking that oh my god i am i am myself a health coach and i'm myself not following what i should be doing and look at me so that used to be so overwhelming for me that you know it it would never stop so i would come back home in the evening i would literally uh you know uh, eat a lot of food especially a lot of carbs and then i would go to bed because i used to be so tired i would just go and crash uh, in that full stomach so and it kind of became a routine for me and i would get up in the morning i would eat healthy uh, during my uh, breakfast and i would carry my lunch to work i would do my gym for 2 hours so i i would tr- i would like i was doing everything possible on earth but at the same time the, nothing was synced and why i'm saying this is right now i am going to say which happened in 2019 so i took a career break um you know um it was kind of um, a blessing in disguise i would say the pandemic happened and i relocated from india and i shifted to singapore which gave me an opportunity to take a break now this break actually transformed me in terms of my health it really gave me that space to think and take a seat back to really understand that what do i want to achieve what do i want to achieve personally what do i want to achieve health wise and one very important lesson that i learned especially for women who are listening to this right now is any health goal you want to achieve in your life it has to be in sync with you internally you just cannot exercise and just follow a diet and you expect magic to happen it will never happen female body do not respond with just diet or just exercise we have to have a holistic approach which also includes our internal stress which also includes our um uh, uh, the the lot of internal processes which regulates the entire system so that probably everything worked in order and i was able to take control of my life um wherein i started doing a good amount of workout increased my lung capacity started eating super healthy became very very health conscious and yes of course you can see i have i did lose a lot of weight but more than that i think i gained a lot of power and control towards my own health fast forward on today's date 2024 uh I think all of you who follow me on social media you know that I almost hike every other weekend and apart from that I do all things possible on earth that keeps me happy with respect to any physical activity exercise at the same time I also have a social life which I um you know I participate whenever I want to but nothing is overwhelming for me at this moment so I kind of try to keep a um you know tap on that and uh, and i have learned it and this is a process to be uh, very honest you know how um, uh, uh, which i have learned and that's exactly what i'm going to talk to you right now that what helped me balance my hormones in my life so the thing that helped me was strategic eating with macro calculation and planning if you i was just telling you about 2016 when i would just eat i mean even if the food is healthy but then you you there is no plan to it there is no structure to it it is not going to work for you because that food that structure is not meant for you so you have to plan to eat exactly based on what is your goal what is your age what is your environment what type of lifestyle do you lead all these things put together is when you actually decide that how much you should be eating what should be your macro calculation what time should you stop eating what time should you start eating what should you eat before going to the gym what you should not be eating before going to bed so all these things are important and this comes under planning second thing is i started exercising as per my limitation rather than pushing myself so 
in 2016 to about 2019, 2018, I would say I would spend two hours in the gym thinking that, okay, let me, because I did not do X, Y, Z body parts. So today let me finish all that body parts because I need to make sure in my head, it used to be like a tick mark. So I need to make sure that I am doing that tick mark of, okay, arms done. Okay. Today legs done. So I, I, it used to be like that, but I never really realized that it's so important for you to be so much in sync with your internal uh, or inner voice, which tells you, which comes, our body always talks to us. And if you really pay attention to it, it will tell you that what exactly you need to do, what exactly you need to eat. We all know what is the difference between craving and hunger. We all know that when we are really hungry and when we are craving, our body is always giving us signals it's just that we need to the same way with exercise also um, I always ask my clients to be very very um, uh, you know uh, observant toward how your body is responding what exactly your body is signaling you so like I have a lot of PCOS patients who um, who believe or who go and you know do a lot of strenuous workout and they don't see any weight loss happening. And the reason they don't see any weight loss happening is because PCOS itself is a, is, a, is a disorder which is aggravated with stress. Now, any form of exercise which is care, cure, uh, causing more wear and tear, more stress, is never going to work in your favor. It will rather create more inflammation in the body. Water retention will become more in your body and you will never be able to lose weight. So it is always, everything has to be in limitations. Every Everything has to be in balance and at the same time it has to be something in which you are happy because at the end of the day as I said female health goal cannot be achieved by just dieting by just doing exercise it has to have a overall balance overall sync um, with whatever we do right stress relieving activities trust me on this or probably you know this is my age talking or whatever it is but the faster you learn the better it is is please practice some form of mindfulness. Now, whatever it can be, you know, it can be gardening, it can be doing some art and craft, it can be mandala painting, it can be anything on earth, but do spend that time with yourself. Connect with yourself once every single day and you just be with yourself. Just try to, uh, um, you know, um, uh, slow your breath, listen to you. I'm not saying listening to you means analyzing yourself or analyzing your mistakes or analyzing, uh, oh, this is what did not go right. I shouldn't be saying all these things. No, you just have to listen to your inner voice without analyzing. Th these are all the uh, things you know, which will make you connected to who you are and what do you really want. And this doesn't happen overnight. And I'm telling this with my own personal experience. It took me, I still, it's been one and a half years, I have been practicing meditation every single day. And today also, I would not say that I have reached a stage where I exactly know or I really understand that I am so connect to my, connected to myself. No, but yes, from what I was one and a half years back to what I am right now, there is a sea change that I can see. Uh, you know, the amount of um, um, the, the wisdom that probably has come to me or the kind of uh, patience that has come to me or um, for that matter, even on my entrepreneurial skills, I see a lot has changed because of this mindfulness activity that I do. And this is the only reason why I, uh, you know, uh, don't get overwhelmed, even if on times right now, when I see, uh, oh, my, I look like I have been, I am bloated, oh, I have just come back from vacation, my body weight is two kgs. I really don't get overwhelmed about it right now, because I know it very well and it's so much, uh, you know, in sync inside me that I know this is not permanent. I know, I know this is just a temporary thing and I'm going to get over it. So this is just one aspect. And yes, sleep. I think I have done multiple videos on this. Seven to nine hours of sleep is extremely important for women. Trust me, you sleep well, you lose weight. You sleep well, your liver functions well. You sleep well, your hormones are in control. 
everything falls in place when you sleep well. And trust me on this, just follow a sleep, good sleep routine for a month and you see it for yourself. Don't have to do anything else. Just sleep well. It is so important. Any questions so far? I'm going to take a water break. So if there is any question, I will be happy to answer that. Either all of you are listening very carefully or you're not listening at all. And that's why you don't have any questions. All right, so I'm going to move ahead. <clears throat> so why hormone health is the most important thing for women? For myriad of reasons, regulation of menstrual cycle and fertility, yes, of course, we know that. Mental health and mood, yes, of course, you know, our hormones are not in control. Our mental health goes for it all. We are stressed, we, are, we have anxiety, we have PMS, we have all sort of mood swings, bone health and muscle health, 100%. Our estrogen really, really, uh, um, uh, you know, decides about our bone density or for that matter, um, the muscle health that we have. So female hormones decide uh, our bone health and our muscle health. And of course, metabolism and fat distribution. So again, how good is your BMR or how good is your metabolism? Uh, how good are you able to metabolize fat? Uh, or which area of your body is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the fat is distributed in your body. All these things are governed by hormones. You will see a lot of times people who have insulin sensitivity or people who have PCOS or pre-diabetic, they are the people who start accumulating a lot of fat in their abdominal area. Now, there is a specific reason for that. And the reason is whenever they eat any form of carbohydrate, the body is not able to regularize the sugar because the body, every time you eat sugar, body has to produce insulin to stabilize the blood glucose and to send it to your cells. But then when the body doesn't know how much of insulin to produce, it produces more of insulin. Now the extra insulin that stays back gets uh, deposited as adipose, as de gets deposited as fat cells, which gets accumulated in your abdominal area. And that is the only reason why people who have PCOS or insulin resistant or pre-diabetes or diabetic people have uh, fat in their abdominal area. And this is also seen in women who are in their perimenopause or menopause state. If they are not very observant towards what they eat, um, they, are, they become susceptible to uh, higher HbA1c or, or a little borderline of uh, pre-diabetes. So, um, so three main hormones regulating women's health, estrogen, progesterone, and insulin, okay? Now, how many of you know uh, what is any of this? Would anyone would like to say something about it? Like what is estrogen, what is uh, progesterone and uh, what is insulin and what is their role? A anybody, if you have any clue about it, you can just talk also, you can unmute yourself and talk also if you want to. But I just wanted to understand that do you have any idea about these hormones or do you know exactly that how these hormones work in your body? <clears throat> Okay, so, all right, so it doesn't look like, all right, okay, so that's fine. So I'm going to, um... so this is estrogen. Estrogen is a female sex hormone. It plays a significant role in our menstrual cycle, in our reproductive system, for our libido, for 
Estrogen is the main hormone for that. Estrogen affects bone density, skin health, cholesterol levels, and body's utilization of glucose and lipid metabolism. So estrogen is, so estrogen, progesterone, and insulin, these three are like, you know, uh, three dots of a triangle and everything has to be in sync. And only when that those, these three are in sync, along with other hormones, of course, uh, then everything is normal around us or in our body. Estrogen also determines our mood and cognitive functions as well. So estrogen has a lot of role uh, in female bodies. And we will, and you will see that as we start growing older, especially when a woman transitions from age 40 to 45 or 45 to 50, the estrogen starts dropping. And exactly when estrogen starts dropping, our body's capacity to retain muscle mass decreases. When that happens, your muscle mass is decreasing, your body automatically starts accumulating more of fat weight. And that is the only reason why it is constantly told that we should always do strength training or we should always have protein in our diet. The reason being because our body is not going to retain the same amount of estrogen as we keep growing older. And also at the same time, you know, if someone has imbalanced hormone, even if you are young, you might have less production of estrogen and more of progesterone in the body. So that is, of course, a possibility. So it's so important to keep all the hormones in sync and even if, you know, naturally our body gets into a state where uh, the regular, the normal estrogen levels are dropping, you still have to be very mindful towards it. You still have to, um, you know, uh, see where exactly, uh, you know, uh, you need to work with in terms of your diet. So, so whenever you cross an age, say, of 43 or 44, and you are going towards perimenopause, that is the time when you really have to look after your diet. You cannot be eating the same kind of food that you probably ate a your back. The reason is not about your weight. The reason is your hormones. Your hormones, they are asking for a different kind of approach to sustain, to function in the same way as you would want uh, it to do. So that's about estrogen and progesterone. Again, estrogen and progesterone work hand in hand. So progesterone is again mainly involved in menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and embryogenesis. Uh, it's basically the formation of embryo. So progesterone is needed for that. It works in tandem with estrogen to regulate the menstrual cycle and maintain the early stages of pregnancy. Yes, progesterone also has a role in affecting in affecting mood and can act as a natural antidepressant. So uh, progesterone, uh, it actually uh, stimulates a neurotransmitter in the brain called GABA. Um, it's a uh, GABA. I, I, I completely forgot the full form of GABA, but it's basically it stimulates this neurotransmitter, which uh, gives a signal of um, anti anxiety in the body. So, progesterone is a natural uh, antidepressant um, hormone and it stimulates. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the hormones in the body which supports us or which uh, helps us in decreasing anxiety. So yes, progesterone is one of that hormone. Additionally, it plays a part in regulating blood sugar levels. Yes, fat storage. So if your progesterone is very high, you will start accumulating a lot of fat, okay? So that's exactly happened with me when I said I was given progesterone shots. The reason I was given progesterone shots was to reduce my estrogen levels because if my estrogen is higher, I was having a lot of periods. My periods would become so high with so much of bleeding that, you know, the, the endometriosis, the, the tissues um, started developing around my pelvic region. So they wanted to stop the period flow 
uh, to happen. And for that, they used to give me progesterone. Of course, my periods stopped. Of course, the growth of those uh, cysts and, uh, you know, the tissues stopped. But then it did have a reverse effect wherein I started accumulating a lot of fat in the body. Okay. So that's what... Um, progesterone does and then it comes the insulin insulin is a hormone produced by pancreas and it's crucial in regulating blood glucose levels we know about that and that's the reason people who suffer from diabetes or there are people who take insulin shots it's just because they want to make sure that the body is able to regulate the blood glucose in a much uh, stable uh, way rather than getting it spiked. So it is not a very good idea for your body to have spikes of insulin um, because that doesn't do anything good to you. Insulin sensitivity can be influenced by other hormones, including estrogen and progesterone. So fluctuations in these hormones affect insulin levels and action, which is right. So if you have irregular estrogen, progesterone, then also, and that is the reason I said when you are reaching towards your perimenopause or from perimenopause to menopause, it has been seen that, that women, they may not have any uh, history of diabetes. They may not have any history of, uh, uh, you know, uh, insulin resistance. But then during this time, because there is an imbalance of estrogen progesterone, they become insulin resistant. So they kind of become susceptible to a higher HbA1c or a borderline uh, pre-diabetes. The interaction, this interaction is especially evident in conditions like polycystic ovaries, where insulin resistance is a common feature alongside hormonal imbalances. So again, uh, most of us, and if you know, if you suffer from hormonal, I'm sorry, PCOS, you are 90% of the time you do suffer from um, insulin resistance. So what are the symptoms of imbalanced hormones, okay? So symptoms include PCOS, insulin resistance, prediabetes, fat accumulation. These are all symptoms of imbalanced hormones. GI symptoms, yes, we do get irritable bowel syndrome. We have issues with our digestion, bowel movement. We do put on weight, constipation, uh, indigestion, um, and a lot of flatulence, all these things happen if you have imbalanced hormones. You get bloating, inflammation, pain, aches, migraine in the body. Again, with imbalanced hormones, you also get sleep disorders, anxiety, depression, and it can be of any level of depression. So all these are symptoms of imbalanced hormones. Of course, there are there are some multi-symptoms also which may happen because of other conditions, but then these are the conditions which fall under the umbrella of irregular hormones. And 90% of these symptoms you can remove if you can balance your hormones. And again, I would like to say this, you can never balance your hormones 100%. That is not possible. We will have uh, phases. We will have a phase when our hormones are really working in our favor and there will be phases when it is not working too much in your favor, which is normal. Like when you are going towards your menstrual cycle, of course, your estrogen is high, your progesterone is low, your body will start showing its symptoms. You may have constipation, you may have diarrhea, you may have acidity. Uh, you will have bloating, you may have periods, pain, PMS. These are normal. The only thing that we can do is we can reduce the intensity of the symptom. And saying goes, if you are in perimenopause or if you are in a menopause state, you really cannot control your body's natural, uh, uh, you know, uh, phase. So the only thing that you can do is you can reduce the intensity of symptom. Now, what is it? Say, for example, you are in a perimenopause phase and you started seeing that, oh, you are, you have started putting on a lot of weight. Your body weight is actually getting accumulated in your abdominal or in your lower extremities. So that is exactly what is called an estrogen belly. So your estrogen is dropping and your body has started accumulating a lot of fat because biologically, women are made to carry fat in our body okay we 
women bear child so that is the reason we need fat in our body but with evolution with changes um you know we don't do that uh to what you know we used i mean we do we do a bear child but it's not how women's bodies are used uh at as it used to be or as the during the time of evolution so uh so because of that you know we have to work towards this entire uh, phase or the system your body um, is now uh, um, ready to process to basically give it that support or give it that signal that hey I'm not going to support the estrogen drop that is happening I am going to boost the uh, you know uh, with food and with uh, um, you know exercise or uh, my approach is going to uh, be something which is going to improve my um, uh, estrogen estrogen is not going to be dropping so fast rather I'm going to help you so that the estrogen doesn't drop so much and my bone health is maintained my muscle mass is is not going away so fast. So that is the approach. And that is exactly how we can manage the symptoms um, and not let it happen in a too intense way. <clears throat> Solutions and approach. Food, physical activity, and mental health. As I said, it's not only about food and exercise. It is also about our internal and external stress, which comes under our mental health. Food, foods based on goal, medical condition, age, muscle mass, and metabolism. We have to see how old are you. We have to say, what is your goal? Not today, if you have PCOS and you want to conceive, you have to have a prenatal body ready. You have to conceive. That means you will have to have enough of uh, uh, you know, iron and folate uh, uh, and essential vitamins and minerals in the body. One second, I think I got a chat. I am 40 and trying hard to lose weight, PCOS since age 14, after proper diet or not losing. Yes, I will do that, Zonan. Um, so, yeah, so as I said that, you know, uh, we have to focus on eating based on our goal. Now, I hear this a lot of times from women. When I talk to them, they say, say suppose I'm talking to somebody who is, say, 35 years old. And she will say, you know, back five years back or 10 years back, I lost 10 kgs of my weight. And now I'm trying, but I'm not able to lose. Of course, you will not be able to lose. Five years back, you were five years younger. Ten years back, you were ten years younger. The body, the body, the way it will, it would have responded to the diet, to exercise, to your environment was absolutely different. Every single year, your approach, the what you eat, and how your body perceives that changes for everybody, and especially for women. Our body do not respond the way a male body responds okay so a lot of times women start comparing their journey with their male partners or friends or any male member of the family and we cannot do that their body their um, uh, formation their everything is absolutely different than us so our body keeps changing requirements of our bodies with respect to food, with respect to exercise, with respect to how much of stress it can uh, endure changes every single year based on our environment, based on the reality that we are at. So that is the answer to the question when someone says that I followed the same diet five years back and it worked and today it did not work. It will not work. You have become a new mom post-pregnancy if you follow the diet that you followed two years back before when you were young or you were not married or, or whatever it will not work post-pregnancy the hormones have changed in your body you need a different approach for that as simple as that similarly somebody has pre-diabetes somebody is diabetic and you follow a pattern where you have lost weight in the past by following that you may lose probably few pounds but not more than that you cannot cross that because what you need is a different approach you need to really understand what your body is asking for okay <clears throat> so the approach has to be sustainable methods number one so this is something which i swear by and i personally follow it and this is something which i have always told to my clients and that is there is no shortcut 
I say this honestly, that people who promote saying no, uh, what, no gymming, uh, no diet pills, just dieting, lose weight. Trust me, I don't want to name anybody, but those are all um, not legitimate ways of, uh, you know, attaining a healthy body. Those are all shortcuts. They will, you know, it will, uh, they will ask you to eat so little food by the end, you will lose all your muscle mass. You will definitely see scale weight dropping down, but it's not going to work or help you at any cost. So your process has to be something which is sustainable so that even if you leave the trainer, three months, six months down the line, you should be able to sustain that. You should by then learn how to transform your lifestyle and not be dependent on a certain type of diet food because you cannot do dieting. You cannot be on a calorie deficit all your life. So the approach has to be always very sustainable. Our life doesn't cannot be ruled by diet plans. So it's very important to incorporate our reality, understand you know, where, what is our requirement. And based on that, if we approach our health goal, trust me, there are very less chances that you will break the rule, okay? I have clients who are extremely busy, like 99.9% .9 of my clientele are women who work. There are women who travel 15 days of the month. They, we ha I have student clients. I also have clients who are like full-time mothers and they are studying. So that is also there with me. So unless and until, you know, we set up and understand the reality. How much time do you have with yourself? What is your meal timing? Do you have enough time to sleep? Do you have enough time to, you know, take rest in between? What do you do throughout the day? Because that is your reality. Now, in this reality, if you start to apply the process that you applied five years, five, two years back, it's not going to work because your life has changed. So always approach uh well, whenever you want to achieve any health goal, your approach has to be sustainable and you have to really think about it again and again, again and again, that is this the right approach? Because if I am someone, uh, if I wake up at four in the morning and I go to bed at 7.30 in the evening, I and somebody asks me, you have to start your breakfast at nine in the morning. No, it's not going to work for me. I can't, you know. I need food at X and Y time because that's what it is. I want to, you tell me to finish my dinner by four o'clock. I can do that, right? So everyone's need is different. At my age, how much of protein should I be consuming? I have to know that. I cannot be doing carb loading if I'm not going and doing any exercise. Even if I am not eating much, I still cannot do carb loading because my body at the age of 43 is not going to burn those calories if I'm not moving. You know, so small changes every single day, sustainable effort, effort, which is more close to your reality. Those are the things which is going to help you for a long term change. Meal planning at the beginning of the week, of course, planning, 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 any goal, any change that you want to achieve. We all know it starts with planning and then it's execution. Physical activity, the approach has to be, again, a balanced approach, doing exercise or any physical activity without too much of strain and wear and tear. Especially for women who suffer from hormonal imbalances, never ever try to do exercise which is too tiring for you, which causes a lot of wear and tear because the hormonal imbalance that you are dealing with is also caused by, a, there's a stress hormone which is constantly released. Your cortisol levels are higher. So whenever there is a lot of wear and tear while exercising, what happens is the cortisol again raises high because there is a stress that has come. to So your body to balance that stress uh, so, so sorry, the cortisol again increases to basically uh, deal with the stress that has come to the body because of the wear and tear. And this does no good to you. It again, uh, you know, uh, stops your fat burning process, especially for people with PCOS, people with uh, perimenopause or uh, menopause phase. 
never ever do exercise that is causing a lot of wear and tear so don't do hid don't do jumping exercises don't do uh you know too much of running and then immediately without break do something else the next step please don't do that always do in progression depending on how much your body is uh able to take and as i said today you know before we started our body always gives us messages you have to listen to your body there is a difference between being lazy and there's a difference between your body is giving telling you hey take a break you have to listen to that and trust me when you listen to that everything works so well for you so no exercise which is too strenuous increase the need non-exercise activity thermogenesis which means apart from your 60 minutes of workout how much active are you throughout the day why don't you start taking your office calls on a standing desk why don't you go uh you know and work till you walk till your kitchen and uh you know um and drink water rather than keeping a water bottle beside you i mean whatever works for you but make sure that you are constantly uh uh you know there is an activity happening which is uh, uh which is covered underneath rather than you so after one hour of workout, you come and sit at one place and like, oh, I'm done and I'm exhausted and I'm not going to move. So that doesn't work for you. And if you can't do anything, at least aim for 8,000 steps per day. Mental health, one of the most important pillars for female health. Practicing mindfulness, any kind of mindfulness activity is extremely important. Good long sleep of seven to nine hours, meditation, gardening, art, journaling, gratefulness, Reiki, angel therapy, whatever you feel you want to do, but do it. You have to be connected with yourself. And if you are not connected with yourself, nothing is going to work in your favor. You, you will be so overwhelmed. You know, you'll try to fix one. Something else will go, uh, you know, out of control. So the only thing that can help you be aligned is your brain and your mind, which you need to train and tame every single day. So I think I have got two more questions. I'm going to quickly see uh, what are these before I... Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Priyanka. Everyone, can you drop your questions here? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Priyanka. All right. So I'm going to share two case studies of two of my clients, okay? And uh, the intention of sharing these two case studies is to give you the background from which these two people came and how they changed their life. It was. It is not about weight loss, uh, you know, uh, that I want to really focus on. It is more about the mental ability that they developed, you know, even when there were a lot of adversities around them when they started. So um, this is just an example uh, that I would like to share with all of you. Second. Yeah. So this is one of my kind from Berlin. Her name is Devya. She actually came to me in 2022. When she came to me, she was, um, um, she was a new mother and uh, she was not in a very good relationship so she was already going through depression and because of her pregnancy she developed postpartum depression and of course she always had this body image issue since childhood and uh, i think she comes from a family which is um uh, which which is kind of male dominated where women have not been given the needed um you know, attention or whatever. So she always developed a body image issue. And she, um, uh, she always felt that she is not good enough. Okay. Uh, so, so this is when we started. And uh, um, so I'm going to go very short and very fast in this. Of course, if, if I start talking about it, it's a long, long story. And probably, you know, I can, if you guys are really interested, we can set up a call and I can talk about it uh, um, sometime later. But then the approach that we started, as I said, right, always and always, whenever or whoever you go to for any form of coaching, personal training, always be aligned with your reality. What is your today's reality? Your today's reality is you are depressed. You have postpartum depression. You have body image issues. You are a new mother. You are still struggling to deal with your new life. And now you want to start a diet plan. Do you think you can, you can put in another extra amount of work taking care of your own body? The reason you are deciding to lose weight is because 
you are seeing the end result. Okay, if I lose weight, this is what I'm going to, you know, achieve. But on today's date, what is your reality? So this, understanding this is number one step. Very, very, very important. And this message is to everybody who's listening right now. Understand what is your, you can be a new mother. You can be a mother of a teen. You may be someone who is trying to conceive. You may be someone who is a student. You may be someone who is just trying to become healthy. Everyone's life, everyone's reality is different. And you need to really pay attention to that. So it's always about small step. Never ever try to do 100%. Nobody can do it 100%. I have never done 100%. Nobody can do 100%. But try to be at least 50%. If not 50%, start with 30% and slowly take it up. And nobody is judging you. There is no competition. Take your time and then do it. So the same thing uh, we started. Um, honestly, uh, 2022, June is when... Uh, I mean, she she was actually a, my client even before that, uh, I think 2019, but that was for a small period. She did not lose any weight and uh, she was she was getting married back then. Uh, 2022 is when she came to me. She was just a new mom, three months old child, and she was really exhausted. She was not having a very good relationship with her husband. And she kind of came to me as a, um, a resort to, uh, you know, help her solve her issue. But I was not the, uh, you know, person who would only do that. So, but I understood, okay, and I'm not a, a counselor or a therapist or anything, but whatever came to my capacity, I understood what she's going through. Uh, and I started telling her, we started, I actually did not start coaching her, but I just started talking to her wherein I told her to make small changes. The good part about her was the trust factor. She trusted me in this whole process and she would herself come up and keep updating me every week that Lupa today I was able to you know climb so x amount of steps today I carried my daughter from the parking lot to the house or something like that right so she would say every small achievement she started enjoying her small small achievement which started becoming more like a happy hormone uh, thing a trigger that started happening and that's when she decided in 22 june she was 19 97 kilos i guess 97 or 99 kilos and she said look i again want to start working and by then i knew that now she has got the rhythm so it's important to understand it's nobody can help you change unless and until you are yourself ready. And nobody is no trainer. Nobody is expecting you to be 100% because it is not possible. Okay. If that was the case, anybody would have done it. So it is always, it starts with you, your willingness to make that change. And so, and also your willingness to go through that journey. That's so important. So then 2022, um, we lost, I worked out with her. We lost 10 kgs. Um, she, we stopped. She again had put on some six, seven kilos. Again, we started working. And uh, this year, uh, March is when she, uh, I mean, this is, this year, March is what she sent me this picture. So this was, I think, my biggest moment uh, of pride. Not just me being uh, someone who, uh, has helped her but also somebody who um, I really admire her and today she's my greatest example that I talk about to most of my clients and uh, and she is really an inspiration I really plan to bring her one day in one of my live sessions if she agrees to but um, yes so this is her story all right so I'm going to give you another example of another client with a different background and know with with a different condition that she came from. And this is a case study of Veena. She's 52 years old, a cancer survivor. She had stage two uh, cancer in, um, not in her lungs, in somewhere in her chest area. She was on, uh, she, uh, she had undergone, I think four sessions of chemo and she was on radiation. Uh, plus, she had to take some pills for almost eight years, which caused a lot of side effects. So the first side effect that caused was her skin literally became really bad. Her hormones were like haywire. 
um, she started putting on a lot of weight and no matter how much she tried, she just could not bring down her weight. And uh, of course, um, she's still diabetic. She, uh, she was, uh, she, she basically developed pre-diabetes and eventually uh, it got diagnosed as diabetes. Now, we have to understand here the approach or where she's coming from. A person who has gone through something like cancer we have to understand the mental state that that person is coming from, right? We we only hear about things, you know, here somebody is facing it. The person doesn't even know whether she's going to be alive six months down the line or not, or not. So the amount of stress that body takes, it puts, it, you know, it takes a toll in your body and that stays. So the amount of stress that three, that she went through and the medication that her body was just not able to cope up with created a havoc in her hormone health. Plus, she already was towards her perimenopause stage. And because of radiation, she already started developing complex, uh, complexities in her reproductive health as well. So she had to get her uterus removed and a uh, lot of other things, you know, happened. So that was the background. Now, what is the, again, and she's a lecturer, by the way. So what was the approach here? The approach was doing sustainable changes and small and practical changes. Now, she is somebody who doesn't have much time in the morning. She cooks her own food. Uh, she has, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an adult son who goes to college, but she takes care of food for the family. She cooks herself, she eats her breakfast, she carries lunch, she comes back home in the evening and she again eats her own, makes her own food and eat. So how can we make changes? So here, the changes that was needed is basically helping her plan her meal for the entire week. Now, once we do that, she knows, Acha, Monday, what I'm going to have, Tuesday. So I need to do my groceries accordingly. And if I have a helper, in India, we do have helpers. We basically tell them that, hey, you need to, prepare or do these, these meal preps so that it's easy for me to come and do it. So it's all again about planning and making small changes. Once a small change happened and you get that uh, happy high of achievement, you do the next one. Again, you do the third one. And this is exactly how we all make changes. So that was there uh, for her. So I think already it's one hour. So I'm not going to take much time. I'm going to quickly finish this. Uh, so it was very high amount of antioxidants which was given in her food, in her diet, protein with every meal. After 90 days, she lost 9 kgs. Her blood glucose levels came down. Uh, energy and gut health definitely became better. So the role of, uh, I'm going to quickly touch base on this. If you want, you guys can take a picture of this and you can ask me later if you have any questions. And I also have an offer for you guys, uh, which I'm going to share right now. Um, understanding macronutrients role, uh, it fuels our hormone production, balanced macronutrients stabilizes blood sugar, nutrition affects stress hormone levels, uh, essential fatty acids support hormonal health. And that's why, you know, it is told for women to eat omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which is like really, really important for a hormone health. Gut health influences estrogen balance, as we spoke about it in our previous slide. How to incorporate macros. Number one, identify your goal. What is your goal? Whether it's weight loss, muscle gain, hormonal balance, improved overall health. Calculate your macronutrient need. How to calculate? I will show you in the next stage. Next slide. Choose quality sources. So opt for whole food, lean protein, healthy fat. I am also giving you a list here, which you can take a picture of in the next slides. Adjust your portions and timing. Again, it has to be tailor-made based on your reality. What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? Do you do night shift? Do you do morning shift? Do you do a regular shift? Do you get break in the afternoon? Do you not get break in the afternoon? Does your work give you enough time to take breaks? Or are you in a job where you are constantly sitting and not moving at all? All these things will determine what is your portion size, how much of carb loading you should be doing. Monitor and adapt. Regularly assess your progress and adjust your macronutrient ratios as needed to continue meeting your goals. I know there are some questions. I'm going to answer all of your questions. So what is the strategy to do meal planning? 
prep in batches. Cook large batch of cook large batch of protein sources, carbs and vegetables at the start of the week. So do your groceries accordingly. Use a macronutrient tracking app. I personally use MyFitnessPal. I track my uh, macro uh, uh, for the day uh, using MyFitnessPal. And it just gives me uh, an amazing data by the end of the day. And I like it that way. You can use some other app also. But MyFitnessPal is actually the best I have seen so far. Plan your snacks wisely. So please portion out your snacks. You should know exactly what you should be eating. Greek yogurt, berries, or even if you're eating a protein bar or any healthy fat or a nut uh, or a seed bar, anything it is, just prevent yourself from eating something which is absolutely non-healthy. And that can happen if you are not planned, especially for snacks. So this is the uh, website that I was telling you about. Take a picture of this. It's called calculator.net. Um, when you go here, uh, it can, you will basically be able to calculate your macros based on your goal. If you look down here, there is an option which says your goal. Okay, There you can write whether you want to maintain your weight, lose your weight. And that will also tell you based on your activity, how many days of the week you are exercising or what is your activity level, absolutely sedentary. They will actually calculate your macros based on your present health status okay and then it will tell you how much of protein how much of carbs how much of fat you should be eating okay so this is your macro calculator now how will you know what all to eat guys i'm going a little faster because i have to answer questions and um it's already 806 so i really don't want to delay i'm sure you guys have uh to go and finish your dinner so um in case if uh I, I, I'm not in a hurry in terms of anyone wants to stay back and talk to me. I'll be more than happy to answer, but I'm just trying to finish this early so that people who want to log off, can they can do that. Um, so go to the next slide. So this is again a list. You can take a quick picture. Now, these are all vegetarian sources apart from eggs. I have not given non-vegetarian sources because those are very known sources, uh, you know, of meat and fish. Rest all are... Uh, these are the sources which is very common in our Indian house. Um, so this is what it is. You can take a quick picture of carbs, protein, and fat. This can also be a ready reference for you when you're doing your grocery planning for the week. Okay. All right. So this is the offer that I was talking to you about apart from the ebook that I will be emailing to each one of you. So on today... Whoever wants to do this, I'm giving a 20 minutes free complimentary consultation. There is no strings attached, so I'm not selling you anything. It's just a, um, it's just something that I want to talk and discuss about. It's, it's a strict 20 minute session where I will evaluate what is your current diet. I will understand what is your goal, what is your dietary goal, and I will give you some personalized recommendations. So if you want to do this, Write down immediately in the message box that you want to do it. Priyanka from my team will make a note of it and she will get in touch with you tomorrow to fix up a schedule this week, okay? So put down in the message box, whoever wants to do this complimentary 20 minutes consultation, no strings attached, evaluate your current diet, understand what is your dietary goal and get personalized recommendations based on whatever you are eating. <clears throat> <clears throat> Once you are done, let me know. Then I'll start answering the questions. Okay, you can still keep typing your email address or your phone number so that Priyanka can get in touch with you. Um, this is my phone number for people who do not know. I can be reached on iMessage, WhatsApp, and email. 
This is the company's email address. If you just put my name, L-O-P-A, at the rate world of wellfitness.com, I will get an email. Uh, same way, Priyanka, who is my team member, who is also there in the call right now, you can also reach out to her at Priyanka at the rate world of wellfitness.com. So these are our contact details. And I am going to stop the share and I'm going to talk to each one of you and I'm going to answer the questions that I have received. Okay, now, all right, all right. So, um, okay, okay, Dipali. Uh, Dipali is our youngest member. Dipali, are you there or you have left the chat? Oh, I'm here. I was just having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about your journey so far? Dipali is the youngest. In fact, you're the youngest client on today's date with me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'm just turning 23. But yeah, sure. I would love to talk. Um, I reached out to Lopa around. I think actually my mom did. She found you on Facebook and she's like, hey, I think you should talk to her. And I'm like, OK, I have tried other dietitians in India before, but I think a lot of them don't understand the North Indian diet or vegetarian diet. And I'm both of them. So it was pretty difficult. Um, so basically a few years ago, I had a really bad cyst and also my hormones, like the male hormones, like testosterone, they were messed up. So I told Lopa that uh, it's easy for me to like lose weight a little, but it always comes back. Um, and I actually did the whole pre-med. I was working in healthcare and now I work in tech. So I knew what was going on, but still nothing was working. And I think in the past two months, I already lost five kgs, and that includes like going to India, which I was pretty surprised because that has never happened before. But she already gave me tips on what to do, what not to do. Um, and it was very difficult in the beginning because I was aiming for 100 percent. But then I'm like, this is not sustainable. And she's like, don't do that to yourself. So even right right now, I told her I love falafel and I was just having a falafel wrap, even though I'm still traveling. So yeah, she she makes things very sustainable for you and what works for you. And it's okay if even if you, I used to work 12 hours a week, um, a day. And now I work like maybe five, six hours and still she understands and she changed the diet. And yeah, so I would highly recommend her to anyone who's looking. And thanks for this webinar. I still learned a lot of new things. Thank you. Thanks, Tepali. Thank you so much for the feedback. All right. So uh, I think, Priyanka, you must have uh, taken a note of people who want to do the consultation. I'm going to quickly touch base on the questions that I have received. Um, insulin resistance. And I hope I have answered to most of your questions. Manage PCOS for my daughter, Lakshmi. Uh, yes, you know, we can talk about it. I don't know how old is your daughter. It, again, depends if she's a teenager or she's in her early 20s or late teens. Uh, we have to talk about it because for kids, for early uh, 20s, the diet and their mentality, we have to take care of a lot of things, and especially when, when it's a student who is undergoing PCOS, it's a completely different approach that has to be taken, which cannot be same as it is for an adult. So I can talk to you, Lakshmi, about that. Um, Insulin resistance and weight gain, Richa. Yes, we know this about you. And uh, we can talk if you want to, um, uh, Richa. We can always talk about it. And we know we have already spoken about it also in the past. Um, what is Anusha's question? Anusha wrote me something here. PCOS and how to regulate periods. Yes, yes. So uh, Anusha, you can actually fix up a call with me. I can talk about your PCOS. It's absolutely uh, doable. You can manage your weight. You can manage your PCOS. And trust me, if you are consistent with your diet, with your um, uh, overall approach, it's a guaranteed thing. Within eight to nine months, your PCOS is definitely going to go completely and before that, like within one and a half, two months time, you will see all the symptoms coming down. Like, you know, the usual symptoms of PCOS includes bloating, um, uh, you know, uh, abdominal fat. All those things will start reducing. You will start seeing inch loss happening. So it's all about approach. 
uh, and understanding the requirement based on your goal, based on your reality and what you do as a person. Sonal, uh, yes, Sonal, I think uh, uh, I have to address you individually for this because you have since eight proper diet, not losing weight around the belly. Yes, belly fat is a very common thing with people with PCOS or insulin resistance. Yes, I just talked to, spoke to. Okay. Jayanti, are you still there? Yes, I am here. How are you? Would you like to say something about your experience with Wow so far? Are you driving? Okay, I think we lost her. Anyways, so okay. Um, I think we do have, I have all the all the things, all the questions. And do you guys have anything else that you want to ask? You can quickly unmute yourself and you can ask me. Yes, yes. Yeah, I understood. I, I thought so, Jenti, that you're driving. That's why. Any other questions, guys? I have time. If any one of you want to drop off, you can do that. But if, if there's anyone who wants to talk to me, you can stay back. <coughs> I still have time. I can give you another 15 minutes and I can still talk. Um, I had a quick question, Lopa. Um, I was seeing a few scales to measure macros. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had any recommendations. Go to calculator.net. Just the online one? Because I know some people are suggesting online you should get like a physical one. Uh, I mean, see, this this is just going to give you a guideline. I mean, if you really want to calculate it based on what is the goal for metabolism, then it has to be done in a very scientific way. But for, giving, for getting an overall... I mean, it's the the in the online ones are actually not bad. They kind of give more or less quite accurate. See, I think very very accurate. If you have to go, that is more for people who are, uh, you know, athletes who know this is the exact amount of energy that I need to derive from carb or protein I need to derive. For them, it works. Um, and I I actually don't know in such scale or anything i personally also use the one which is online okay perfect yeah do you know which ones oh uh, yeah vitamins help with pcos yes of course so fat soluble vitamins uh um, you know uh, minerals uh of course you know you have to have magnesium and zinc in your diet um uh, to uh, yeah, control to basically manage your hormones uh, you need fatty acids so fat soluble vitamins are again important for you so multivitamin uh, zinc magnesium omega-3 and 6 fatty acids are very very good and important for managing hormonal imbalances now these can be taken through natural sources depending on age now since you are 40 I would say you can supplement it because naturally you may not be able to absorb so much. So supplement it. And uh, uh, I probably, you know, you, there are a lot of OTC um, supplements that you get. You can probably pick it up. But my recommendation would be to first analyze or get a blood test done to see what are the deficiencies. Because say, for example, someone has thyroid, they might have iron deficiency or a B12 deficiency uh, because they are susceptible to deficiencies because when you have thyroid, you really do not absorb enough of um, nutrients in the body. Yeah. So, um, so PCOS or any hormonal imbalances cannot be addressed with just one approach. Having supplements or right eating food or exercising, these are all parts of the process so everything has to be done but simultaneously
Okay, I don't know. Uh, do you stay in India, Sonal? Sonal, are you in India? Yes, Lopa. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Then in that case, what you can do is you can get your uh, uh, basically B12, uh, iron, I mean, basically hemoglobin B12, uh, or do a CBC, uh, B12, vitamin D. And then you check your lipid, thyroid, blood glucose, because you have PCOS, right? So definitely check your HbA1c or blood glucose. Uh -huh. Just do HbA1c, whether you have fatty liver or not, because in a lot of cases with PCOS, they also have fatty liver, but you're 40, but it's it's always safe to do it. So check your liver function, your kidneys are functioning well or not. So you can just get a full profile check for your skin, uh -huh. liver, uh, CBC, uh, thyroid profile, um, yeah, and all your uh, deficiencies like B12, vitamin D. Okay, so any other, uh, you know, like estrogen and all, we don't need to get them tested regularly. There's no, no point. I mean, how intense is the situation depends on that. Like, is it like that bad that you've started having? Like, how bad is it? Is it like you have started developing a lot of male hair, androgens are high in the body? It depends on that. But I think what you can probably do is anyways, you have to go to the doctor, right? And if the doctor feels that, see, uh, if, if your symptoms are very high, then I'm sure the doctor is going to give you, a, 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 you know, a thyroid, sorry, a hormone test to see your estrogen and progesterone. Okay. So I have no symptoms. Most It's only and only mostly it's like a weight issue, the weight issues that I'm having. Hmm. And uh, and just the hair, uh, the hairline is receding. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Your hormones are quite uh, haywire. We can talk about it. Uh, actually, um, I, oh, have to, okay. I have to ask. I have to understand a couple of things. So okay. yes, yeah. Um, so anyways, okay. uh, we'll see when whenever we. I mean, you know, we'll schedule a call uh, based on your and my availability, and we can talk about it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Dipali. Good night. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. It is always my pleasure to talk.